Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and I had a subscriber make a point, not a question, but a point and I'm going to flip it in here for you guys. And I knew for a fact someone was going to address this when I made that last video. I was ready for it. Alright, this person said, but Jason, you can't bench press 405 right now yourself, let alone close grip 405. So uh, let me put on my plus 5 out of weapon smithing. Do a little bit of crafting and let's talk about it. Alright, excellent point. You are correct. I do not currently bench 405. I used to, however, do sets of 5 with 405, 5 rep sets on the close grip bench press back when I was young and virile in my late 20s. And you guys have seen plenty of photos of that when I was actually really big. So, that being said, <laughs> I do have a little experience with that. But you know what? The interesting thing is that isn't the point. That was not the point of the video. The point of the video is that if you have a weak link anywhere in your body and you're not strong on the basic exercises in which they are a primary mover, worrying excessively about little minutia of maybe, maybe I need to work the tricep with this different angle with a cable or a dumbbell to bring up that weak point, but you're weak on the close grip bench press. You only can close grip 135 pounds for seven or eight reps. Again, the point of the video is that you need to be focusing on getting stronger on your basic compound movements. That is what's going to put the most meat on any lagging muscle that is a primary mover. And the close grip bench press is a fantastic exercise for the triceps, chest, everything else, but definitely for the triceps. So we're weighted dips. And the whole idea behind that statement, uh, and even Paul Carter knew that when he said that and I quoted him on it, we're speaking in hyperbole. Speaking in hyperbole, because you know what the truth of the matter is? 99% of you out there, even if you use anabolic steroids, will never close grip bench press full range of motion 400 pounds. All right? That's the real world. The majority of you out there genetically do not have the strength to get there with training and even moderate doses of steroids. You do not have the genetics or the structure to do that. That's the real world, but that's not the point. The point is working towards that goal and getting stronger on those basic exercises will do more for you. Will do more for you than trying to figure out what angle you need to hit that little head of that muscle with that you're worried about with a cable versus just getting stronger and increasing the workload and the progressive overload on that through a basic heavy exercise. And again, this goes back to knowledge that's been confirmed in exercise science in the modern world, particularly by the Russians during the Cold War with all of their research, but that the human race has known for 2,500 years. Go back again to the story of ancient Greece with Milo of Croton. The ancient Greeks understood that progressive overload was the magical key to gaining both size and strength in your muscles. That's why we have the story of Milo and the bull. And I love to tell this story about once every two weeks out of the like 50 videos I do because it's a fantastic story. It's so simplistic. And that was that Milo speculated as, as the most famous wrestler in ancient Greece at the time and one of the strongest men in the world speculated that he could become the strongest man in the world and lift a bull if he did so progressively. If he started lifting that bull calf when it was a calf, if he lifted it every day and his strength increased just from lifting it in small increments, a few ounces that it gained every single day, if he just added the amount of weight he lifted at the rate that that calf grew, that he would be able to lift a bull one day. And so Milo used to get under this bull, squat it up on his shoulders and carry it around in the town, this little bull calf. And the end result of it, he did this for two years. And when that little calf was fully grown from him doing this every day, he was finally able to get underneath that fully grown bull and squat it up and lift the weight of the bull with his back and legs. And thus he became known as the strongest man in the world. And that again, the story of Milo of Croton. This has been understood by the human race for 2,500 years. It's been confirmed with modern scientific studies. Everyone wants to reinvent the wheel instead of understanding that simply focusing on getting stronger and increasing the workload and progression on these basic exercises will always be the bread and butter of your gains. That will always account for 95% of the progress that you make. 
95% of it will be from those, all right? The isolation movements are only icing on the cake, and truth be told, studies don't even confirm that isolation movements do anything for beginners for the most part. You need to remember that. They help a little bit as you become more advanced, and even I do curls. But the studies have shown us that lat pull downs and bench presses do more for your biceps and triceps than curls and tricep extensions do for novices in their first couple months in the gym. And actually adding those to them doesn't increase their growth um, significantly. It can in some cases a little tiny amount, but it's usually statistically insignificant uh, in the studies we've seen so far. Meaning you need further studies to even verify that it's even gaining any muscle at all to add those to them. Meaning adding curls to your lat pull downs, it hasn't even been fully proven yet that a novice lifter in the gym that it actually adds any bicep muscle to add that on top of the lat pull downs. And we know that the people doing the lat pull downs gain more muscle than the ones who just do the curls if only one exercise is picked. So think about that for a minute. Again, this was about hyperbole and setting a lofty goal to point that out because you may not ever have the triceps the size of the guy who, who can close grip 405. You probably will never have triceps as big as hell. Statistically, you probably won't, right? But he's going to have enormous triceps. And if you get as strong as you can on your five rep max, your eight rep max, your 10 rep max, on the closed grip bench press or the weighted dips, you absolutely will bring up a lagging tricep. It is biologically impossible for it to not grow as a result of that. And that's the point. That's the point. The point isn't that you're probably not going to reach it. The point isn't that I can't do it any longer because I can't do it any longer. I think the most you guys have ever seen me close grip on camera in my late 30s is what, about 350 with a pause? Um, <laughs> let's just be honest here, guys. That's in my late 30s. Uh, turn 40 next week. Um, I'm probably never going to bench 405 or close grip 405, but you know what? If my goal if I got up here and decided that I wanted in my head the important goal that I wanted to add another inch of meat to my triceps and it became really important to me to do, if it became really important for me to do, do you think I would be sitting around saying, well, I'm going to need to go find um, this special reverse grip cable pull down to do that? Or do you think I would be focusing on getting a fucking 405 closed grip bench press again? Or do you think I would be focusing on doing weighted dips with 200 pounds of plates again? Which one do you think I would do if I decided and got the idea in my head that adding another inch to my triceps became really, really important to me? Because it's not. It's not important to me at this point. Uh, my triceps are big enough for anything I need to do. I don't see a benefit to it. But if I changed my mind, and you know what? We all change it. I could change my mind. I might decide one day it's some crazy ass idea in my head that I need another 20 pounds of muscle. Why I would do that, I don't know. But, you know, we all get crazy ass ideas in our heads and things that we just decide to do. We just decide what's important to us. You know what? You know what's important to you? What you decide is important to you. But if I got that idea in my head, don't you think that's what I would be doing? Do you guys really think I would be sitting around doing the other and trying to figure out the perfect angle uh, <laughs> to do 20 rep sets with this cable to pump and squeeze? Or would I focus on getting strong as fuck on the closed grip bench press, the push press, the weighted dip again? You know why? I'd be doing the latter because those are the exercises that put the most meat on you. They will absolutely bring up the weakest link in the kinetic chain. In fact, uh, arguably the push press might actually be the best uh, overall tricep builder out there for anyone who's already doing chest presses of any type. It is arguably the best because it does work the long head also, that stretch component that a lot of guys try to get through doing um, a lot of these isolation movements are trying to get the long head to come up. A push press actually does that uh, decently well. So, again, this was hyperbole. It was pointing out that, no, you're not going to reach that. I'm probably not going to reach that again. But if I wanted really big triceps, if I needed bigger triceps, I would sure as fuck try. And if you want bigger triceps, and it's something really important to you that you just decide you want really bigger triceps, do you really think you're going to get there? 
If you're sitting here with a 135 or 185 pound closed grip bench press, do you really think the key to putting meat on your triceps at this point is going to be finding the right perfect cable or dumbbell isolation movement for them? No. Or is it going to be trying to get closer to that 405? It's probably going to be the latter if you're smart. Why? Because the basics work. They're called the basics for a reason. And the thing that people forget, anyone who's successful at these things they do, they add skills. They add training to things. They don't get rid of the basics. When you get rid of the basics just to focus on the, the smaller minutia, that's actually when most people stop progressing, no matter how far they are in their endeavors. Uh, you can apply this to everything in life. It doesn't have to be to weightlifting. It doesn't have to be to gaining muscle. It could apply to almost any skill in the world because lifting weights and gaining muscle is a skill. Is it not? It is. It is a skill. But you can apply it to anything. But when you quit focusing on the basics and only focus on the minutia instead of saying, hey, I need to keep honing the basics and I've got other skills, minor side things I need to add to it to improve. You know, in this case, maybe you're adding some isolation stuff. But the second you stop working on improving at the basics, you will stagnate. You are fucking done. That's it. You might as well throw in the towel and give up at that point. Because without continuing to progress and get better at the basics and anything you do, you will stagnate no matter how much you focus on the smaller minutia that contributes less. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.